Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 for the second part of this week's update. So yesterday we had a good look around on, um, in Norbit to have a look at the new sciences that were being produced. So now, so now we're going to start off with what's been going on on all the planetoids around the system. And starting off with Norvis. So these are the places that are producing all of the infrastructure and all of the stuff that's needed up in space in order to get things working as we want them to. So, for example, down here, Tristan has upgraded. These are the batteries for the trains that I was talking about yesterday. These are being made down here. Tristan has upgraded these by putting in a beacon full of modules and putting in modules into the um, assembly machines as well. So we're now producing a crazy, the crazily fast. This is plus 240% speed, so more than about all, so almost three and a half times the normal speed. You can see the, the, the batteries pouring in down here. Now, interestingly, this recipe seems to use batteries and lithium sulfur batteries and steel, which is um, an interesting combination, but um, sure, I guess uh, you, you do you. And that seems to be able to make these batteries that are then being passed down here and over into the rocket. And this is the secondary rocket. So this, this is the main rocket that goes to the, the space main bus. But that belt with the batteries on comes up here and goes under all the way under here, as you can see by that big, long yellow line. These things are ridiculous. Loops around here and then goes up into this rocket. So we're loading them into the... And that was the explosion of um, the nuclear artillery. We'll go and look at that later, probably. Um, so yes, we are loading these the, the batteries into into the rocket here to be taken up into space and then charged up there and put into the trains and so on. So they're all being made down here. Um, I think there isn't any sort of bonus on the productivity side for, for making them down here. However, it does mean that instead of bring, having to bring up 20 batteries, 10 lithium sulfur batteries and 2 steel to make a battery, in order to then produce a battery up in space, we are able to just take up a single battery. And so that's going to be much cheaper on the logistics front. It, it, doesn't get the, it doesn't reduce the amount of resources we're getting through to make them, but it does make it logistically a lot cheaper because instead of taking, uh, what was it, 32 items up, you only have to take one item up. And even if they don't stack quite as high, because they, they, well, they stack up to 60, which is not a number, but um, well, it's, and technically it's an even number, but it's, it's a strange number. Even if they don't stack up quite as high as the um, as the as the uh, the some as, as the um, individual components would, it's still going to be a massive, massive saving in the amount of logistics space it's going to take up in the rocket. In order to take them up there. So speaking of the rocket, Tristan has also put in a system over here. Um, so this, this, as you, you may remember from a previous video, this is the area where sometimes a train will drop with a bulk delivery of stuff. So that could be copper, steel, iron ingots, or productivity speed or speed modules, any of those things. The train will pause briefly at this station here, then drop over to here, unload into these warehouses, and then, it, then previously it would all pour down the belt and go straight into. Uh, Oh, oh yeah, this, the belt goes under here, I remember, and then into this rocket to be sa taken up into space. So we'll take up, and it, when we run out of iron or copper, we'll take up an entire train load of the um, of the ingots for it. So there's a big, it's a big dump that goes up in one go, but then we won't need any for a while longer. So it sort of, it sort of feels like it works. I think I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. What Tristan's done here is some sort of cunning system that allows the trains to, to deliver to either rocket. So. I haven't looked into the exact details of how it works, but I think on a high level, we've got a system here that is watching the signals that come up from either of the either of the uh, the rocket's communication systems to say, okay, the rocket needs iron or copper ingots. That will be fed up to here. It will pull out the iron or copper ingots from the, from the signal and check it. And I, I guess these are just to, to just pass that through. Let's try and see. I am honestly not sure. This is very, very hard to tell. But basically, what I think he's doing is then causing this tra this station to summon a train over one of these trains over when any of those, when either of the uh, the, the the rockets require requires a, a delivery of ingots or any of the other stuff. The trains will then turn up here, unload, and over here, this will be a system that then splits out the iron or copper ingots to go to, so, and then the splitters will allow them to go down either of these belts, and I assume these are reading in the contents of the belt uh, in order to do a latch. So as long as the as long as the, the system is requesting it, or there is any copper in here, uh, then it will carry on passing it down to that rocket or down to this rocket. So the idea of this is that trig is that one one rocket will say, "I would like some copper." And so a train will turn up with a load of copper. This system down here will choose whether which which rocket it is that requires the copper and send it in the appropriate direction. And then once it's started flowing down one of these belts, these 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 things along here will monitor it and keep it flowing until it stops because all of the iron has or copper has come out of that train. It all so it'll carry on flowing and flowing and flowing until it's all gone. And then we will stop requesting it. And then we'll know that we've stopped requesting additional copper. And if another train comes in for the other rocket, it won't carry on flowing down the the the, the first one. Does that make sense? So essentially, once it's, once a once a rocket requests some, 
it'll start flowing to that rocket and once it starts flowing to the rocket it will keep going until this until it stops this is like is it a triac i think is the electrical electronic component that does that it as long as the current is flowing it'll carry on flowing but if it stops then it won't start flowing again until it gets another signal um it's i think it's based probably based it, it, the idea is based around that and that might be where tristan got the idea from because well we are both electronic engineers so that, so that would make a certain amount of sense but that ensures that the uh, you won't end up with a load of copper left behind in here that can't go anywhere because because you filled up the station to the amount to the amount where it stopped from saying yes i definitely need some more because you do need to empty it all through so that's it's interesting it's a little bit convoluted and i can see the system getting more and more complicated as we as we uh, get further into the game and do this sort of thing with more and more different trains but at the moment it seems like a yeah, it seems like a nice idea. As a side note, li linked, linked to this as well, he, Tristan has also started putting lithium sulfur batteries into this rocket. And goodness knows where, because this is such a tangle of, of tangles. Um, but somewhere along here, the lithium sulfur batteries are somehow being passed up to this rocket, because we need those for repairs of the uh, of the battery packs up in Norbit, so they need to be shipped up there. Um, I'm not quite. Oh yeah, okay. I do know what's going on here. That's 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 got that's stopped there because well, that's as far. That's the. Um, that's where where it's being controlled so that, that's okay and we're slowly feeding in a steady stream of these uh circuit of, of these um memory card substrates in order to be able to build up build them up in space as you as you saw yesterday i also touched yesterday on how tristan is starting to produce all the various different streams so one of the things he needed for that was lithium so he set up a lithium um uh delivery cannon somewhere it's not over here in the lithium where the lithium is being produced which is all of these machines here that are producing oh hang on it's being sent over here okay it is over here so <laughs> the way he's done this is we've got we've got a warehouse full of lithium here as it's being produced that that feeds it up to here where it goes into the train station um but also feeds it along this belt that goes all the way over here into the big oil area because this is somewhere where i set up lots of delivery cannon stuff um a week or two ago because i needed lots of oily stuff up in space and he's brought the lithium over here and um and tapped tapped it in over here so this will be the one for normal lithium for streams okay um so this is working in the same way as everything else except it's just got a rather long belt bringing it all the way over i mean i suppose actually it's not that bad that's probably less ridiculous than it would have been to put in an additional station over here for dropping off more um delivery cannon capsules and and, and then doing it separately but still it, it feels excessive but then this is factorio excessive is pretty much a fact of life <laughs> and that's why we're only getting 42 ups or 33 ups um but never mind that doesn't really matter for the capture so the next thing he's done, and actually both him and Mark did this, uh, is they put in additional um, air scrubbers along the top here. So we, it was noted that the uh, the pollution was starting to escape from the uh, the new free power area up here along the top corner. Uh, that seems to be mostly fixed. There is still a little bit escaping over here, drifting out, but we've got we've got some air scrubbers along here. They seem to be doing an okay job of cleaning it up. Maybe maybe the uh, Tristan and Mark between them didn't put in quite enough air scrubbers because there is a bit of esca pollution escaping over here. Um, we've got them over here around this mine, so maybe that'll catch some of it as it comes past. But we're still going to have this drifting over the water and upsetting the biters. Now, we do have sufficient defences along here, I reckon, to, to, to keep the biters at bay there and, and up here. These are prob probably going to be okay, but it's a little bit of a concern. We might... Um, we might want to put 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 some more uh, pollution scrubbers along here, and maybe even extend them around here. It, yeah, it, it's a little bit dodgy. The rest elsewhere, though, we seem to be doing a pretty good job of keeping it all inside the in, in inside the base. Um, there's a little bit escaping across the water down here from. Uh, so we, yeah, we could do with some more air scrubbers down here. But the uh, mark especially has been putting in ludicrous levels of RoboPort coverage. So most of that is going to be possible without having to put any actual um, wandering around and doing things manually effort in. It's going to take about an hour after the uh, request is put down for the bots to get out there and place the stuff, of course. But we are going to be able to um, able to expand that as as we need to and make sure the uh, protection is up and running. Uh, yeah, we've got. Yeah, we've got more more filters along here that are stopping the stopping this cloud getting out that way as well. So it seems it seems to be basically okay. We do have a very very dirty patch up in in, in the middle of all of the base, but it, it's kind it's kind of working. So that brings us neatly on to um, on to Mark, who has been um, building, uh, who has also been yes, also been building stuff. Of course, let's turn the pollution off again because it's horrible. Mark says he's been building bio labs on the mall. I have no idea what bio labs are. Let's take a moment to search for those. 
Aha! I found them because uh, I went. I looked all the way along the bus, as you probably saw, and didn't find anything. Um, but fortunately, Marcus put a a, 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 ping, a thing on the map, sorry, to allow me to find it. So yes, Marcus has been building bio labs up here. And what are these? These these take in electronic circuits, iron beams, glass, and biomatter to make well bio labs. And then the bio labs are apparently to be used to make fertilizer, uh, which Mark is going to need for a lot of his biological shenanigans. So fertilizer is made 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 oh made from biomatter and nitric acid okay and can be turned into oh you can use it to grow wood more efficiently you can send it by delivery cannon ah yes he needs it to make the nutrient gel in order to make those um those uh, bioscience genetic material Christmas tree things that I was showing you yesterday so that's why he's making the uh, the fertilizer there are two recipes they both require fertilizer though and he's probably he might well be making this somewhere on this planet um. It would seem like it's sensible to do it down here where the um, biomatter is. So up here we have um, nitric acid being made, which is, means we bring in, uh, we, we need to make uh, hydrogen for, by splitting air. We have a facility down here that's, that's pulling in air and splitting it into hydrogen and oxygen. The oxygen is fed into the um, in, into the bio labs over here because using sorry, yeah petroleum gas and oxygen apparently makes biomatter. I was not aware of that. I thought we just I thought that was something we just pulled up out of the out of the um, dead bite nests, but sure that's probably probably useful and that's why that's why he's bringing in the petroleum gas here and then he's bringing in mineral water here to mix that with the, the hydrogen that comes off as, as the as the byproducts of making the oxygen and that can be used to make the uh, uh, the ammonia uh, with no, sorry the, well the nitrogen can, from the air can be used to make ammonia with that can be made to make ammonia and then with that mineral water we can make it into nitric acid along with some rare metals so that then gives us all of the ingredients we need up here with the biomatter and the uh, the nitric acid in order to make the fertilizer which is then flowing out around here and because this is a, um, a mark system it is it has is, it is managed to catch up it's run nice quickly it's caught up and we now have a warehouse full of fertilizer in here i assume that is going to be taken up into space somehow i don't know if we have a way of doing that just yet but at some point in the future that i'm sure that will find its way up to uh, to mark's bioscience production up in space and allow him to get on with that um i can you can you did i say you could delivery cannon fertilizer i think i think i did Yes, you can put it in a delivery cannon and get it up that way. So maybe maybe that's what he's going to do in the short term. And then in the longer term, we can move over to having a slightly more organised system using trains and space elevators and other such such stuff. So that'll work. Should, yep, that should work quite nicely. And that brings us to the end. Oh, there's a, there's a, um, a robot port here without any power. That's um, unfortunate. So that needs an extra pylon. Uh, it there, probably. Instead of, instead of that one. Oh, there's, there's two of them in there for some reason, and they're still not getting the RoboVort, but yeah, that one will. Uh, okay, so that brings us to the end of what's been going on on Norbis. So let's head out a little bit further out into the cosmos. Uh, we want to go first to um, Njord. This, this will be a brief a brief stop on Njord, but over here, Tristan has put in an additional um, delivery cannon somewhere that's dealing with all of this rare metals coming out here because he wants to ship that off to... Um, Parts unknown. Okay, no, he's got. Oh, I see, he's got a splitter here, so it's going that way by preference because he needs that for making the holmium. But then the overflow is being fed off round here to go to a delivery cannon somewhere over, probably one of these ones over here, which will be shipping it off to um, th this one, which will be shipping it off to Norbit. And this is another one for him to use for making the plasmas, I suspect. Um, no, that one. Sorry, no, I take it back. That one's going into the energy science production. So he needs he needs rare metals for the energy science, and he also needs rare metals for uh, for making plasma. So he's got that that going from there, and then on Agnea, he's done basically the same thing again. Over here, where we've got another, we've got a belt coming across from the from the supply of rare metals that are being generated on on Agnea, fed across here, and then being delivered kind of off to the this, this is the um, the. The streams area where he's making all the various different um, matter, uh, energy streams, plasma streams, ion streams, and that sort of thing. The, all, all, all the different coloured clouds we talked about. Um, and he's put that in as it, it, it was a bit of a squeeze to put it in there because I hadn't left a great deal of space around here when I was when I was building it, build, building up on Agnea. Um, he was originally trying to put it up here, but I thought it'd be a little bit tidy, so he's put the delivery cannon over here, and then this belt has sort of snaked through the middle of here, which is, I mean, that's that's okay. It'll 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 work. Um, and that then is now capable of shipping out all of the rare metals you could possibly want because it's, as you can see, it's caught up. Um, and this one is now taking any of the overflow and shipping it to the Whether these, the problem with it is shipping it out from these outposts like this is it's going to mean that all of his processing and development on in Norbit is going to be rather reliant on how much uh, rare metal is being produced as a byproduct here and on Njord. And that could potentially be a problem if we're not if we're not producing if we're not churning through the the core fragments here fast enough, and therefore not producing enough of the uh, of the rare, of the raw rare metal to cook into the rare metals. Then 
then that means it's going to starve the machines at the other end and we're not really going to be able to use the huge supply of rare metals that are available on Norbis. However, once again, this is another of those sort of pretty much temporary systems. Um, I noticed this has stopped as well, which is interesting. Um, does that mean... Are we... Sh Okay, well, no, uh, no, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to have a bit of a look into this and work out why it seems that things are running a bit slower out here. But could it be because we've actually caught... caught oh, it's because we've actually caught up on Vulcanite? No, not really. It's still flowing and it's still it's still gradu very gradually filling up this warehouse. So I have to admit, I am not sure what's going on here and why, uh, why the sand doesn't seem to be flowing through at quite the rate it was earlier. But I'm not going to look into that right now in the middle of the video. I'll have a look at it at another time. Maybe on stream. We shall see. So let's keep moving through. Let's keep moving through the solar system. Head back out to Kothar, and this is where Mike has been playing around. And he has been um, he's, he decided that the amount of space he had before, which was essentially up along here and across here, he got he, he had enough of that. So he expanded out to here in, in in one one week. Then last week he expanded up to about here, and then this week he's decided to expand up to here. I think he's just trying to put off um, doing any 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 further work on on sciences because we suggested that maybe he should be looking into the uh, material science because it's in his colour. So maybe he's rebelling and saying no, I don't want to look at science. It sounds scary um, by just going off and doing enormous amounts of combat and liberating. Well, he's got he's got nearly a I'd say he's probably got about a quarter of the planet. He's got beyond the. Um, middle over here and not quite to the middle over here so that is getting close to having a quarter of the planet um so maybe so next time maybe he's going to be setting up the uh the, the core miners on all these uh, patches around here who knows mike is very much a um a what's name unto himself so i think he's gonna he's gonna be going off doing goodness knows what and just uh, and uh, and um yeah i have no idea uh so, yes lots of clearing biters he's added um medium power poles onto his uh, small down here the uh the miniature mall so they're, they're going in there lovely i guess he realized he needed lots of them because of the sheer amount of wall he's been putting along here and uh, with and with the laser turrets all the way along it yeah get through quite a lot of the small uh, sorry the medium power poles uh some to minor fixes he's increased the rate that iridite gets put into the iridium system oh yeah that'll be after my suggestion last week where i said that um where is the system the system is here here we go here we go. Yes, yeah, so we've got the we've got the iridite cores coming out here. They're being processed flat out. That's fine. And when a train comes in, it it bumps the speed up a little bit. And we yeah anyway. But over here, when an iridite train arrives, which I think it's about to, um, previously there was only one belt going in over here, so it meant he wasn't really. He, it was it was limiting. The, the system was very much limited by the throughput from the station down into down into the uh, in, into, into the processing facility over here. Now, however, because he's put in some additional belts, as you can see here, there's now three belts of iridite flowing through, um, and that means when when it actually gets into the uh, into the system, all of this is going to start running much much more quickly, and we're going to get a much higher rate of irid uh, iridium coming out of the other end. So you can see it all flowing in there, going through the splitter. And now you've got, yeah, we've got, this is going to be roughly three times as much as we had before because the, the amount coming up from here is pretty insignificant at the moment. So take going from one belt to three is going to triple it. If we wait a minute or two, uh, then we'll see this this whole. Oh, actually, no, we won't. I was going to say we'll see the whole system running at full speed, but no, we actually won't because one train's worth is only about this much iridite. That all disappears very, very quickly. <laughs> wow, I'm kind of appalled at how little that stack. How, how small the stacks of, ir of um, iridite are in the, and uh, so how quickly that all just empty, empties straight out. That's going to need a lot more mines and a lot more trains if he's going to have enough to keep to keep the system running. Although that said, here comes another train. What have you got? This is another iridite train. So, okay, it's maybe it's running sort of somewhere like something like 50% of the time. So it's not doing it's not doing too badly. We are getting a decent amount of flow coming through here. It's probably going to, it's going to increase the amount of uh, irid iridium he's producing, and we're not really using the iridium for anything yet. So <laughs> it's sort of I'm not going to say it doesn't matter how much he produces, but it's not going to be as quite as consequential as perhaps with say the holmium, which we're actually trying to use at the moment. Let's have a quick look at how much how much is be how much is being produced. Um, if we search for ingots, oh, just ingot actually. And we can see if we look over the last hour, that's probably a good one. Uh, we can see the yeah, you can see the going up and down as the as the as the trains come in. Um, but we're getting an average through here of about about just about 54, 55, 55 a minute. That's not bad. Um, it's faster than any of the other other um, exotic exotic resources uh, that come in ingot form. Anyways, it's much, it's, it's much faster than the holmium, and it's enormously faster than the beryllium. Um, but I think we may we may be getting asking Mark to go out and expand the beryllium processing as I, as I've mentioned a, a, a few times before. I won't I won't talk about that all over again. 
We've had another two Immersite cannons put in on uh, Bridget. Let's see if we can find those. Because uh, in order to make the more advanced solar panels, we need quite a lot of um, uh, imm imm Immersium. That's what I was trying to say, not Iridium. So that's coming up here and then being loaded into more of these guns. And I think with the intention of probably having more processing being done out on... Um, on Taishikuten, which is where it's currently being processed. So we're flinging large quantities of that out there. Um, and as a, as the, uh, the the next next step of that, um, Mark has also been busy on Taishikuten, expanding. Yeah, here we go, expanding the, um, the the processing of the of the immersive of the immersite. So yeah, we've got loads coming in here and then being fed out on all of these belts. It fills the it's trying desperately to keep these uh, this 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 thing reasonably full and not doing a very good job of it because we're pulling it out at a decent rate lots and lots of crushing well this is this is it's basically he's taken my design and extend and, and tripled it extending it upwards uh which is i mean that's how you how you make things bigger and better in factorio so there's now loads of it coming around here we've got a bit of an overflow of, o overload of sand at the moment but it, i mean it mostly seems to be flowing through at a reasonable rate um chunking that through in, in, in yeah essentially all of this all of the extra processing means we are now producing um the crystals much, much more quickly the plates don't seem to be being produced much more quickly i think but maybe we don't maybe we don't have a shortage of those i think there was one of them we had plenty of one we had a shortage of yeah so there we go the plates are the plates are being produced faster than they're needed so that's fine it's the crystals that are the um th that we are very very short of at the moment and those are being all being chucked into here to be shipped over to uh, norvis and this will be to make probably to make the advanced solar panels i imagine so yeah, it's all going into all, into all of that solar expansion you saw earlier. And so that's why we have this massive column of uh, machines here dealing with the immersium sulfide um, and producing lots and lots of output. And yeah, these all of these all these things all these previous levels seem to seem to be full. So we could if we wanted to expand this a bit, we could probably um, put a few more of these machines in. But then we might need to do some belt upgrades as well because this this red belt here looks fairly full. But there's there is room for a bit more expansion on this if we decide we want to. So that's going, yeah, that's going nicely. We're um, we're producing lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of immersite there. <laughs> Lovely. So that's the uh, that's all of the construction we've done. I think that brings us more or less nearly to the end. We do need to touch on the death counters because Mike did manage to um, die fairly spectacularly in this stream um, because he went and stood in the goo. <laughs> so he was running around quite happily um, doing doing biter combat, biter bite combat, and he, he then he, got, he defeated the biters in the area he was working on. Got a bit overly complacent, stood in some goo, and, and promptly died to much consternation from him. How? You're standing in spit, crushed bots all around you. Are you are you trying to be some sort of Egyptian king and take take, take your uh, servants with you to the afterlife? But how? I think you got spat uh, at. Everything was dead. And, you got and then you went and stood in the goo that they dropped. So, um, yes, well done there, I suppose. <laughs> uh, that brings him up to a total of 46, uh, which is now almost triple the uh, second second place. Sorry, more than triple second place, um, and way out ahead of the rest of us. Uh, we're not. I'm not quite sure how to um, how to uh, describe this in the on the um, on on the list of um, what's been doing the killing. Uh, let's put it down to uh, negligence. I think that's probably a reasonable description of what happened. So that, that means you're all caught up for this week. Congratulations on that. So that means you can come along on Monday for the at 7.30pm UK time for the stream when we shall be carrying on with all of this stuff. Get some more science up and running. Get things just going a bit faster and a bit better. Maybe I'll look at Astro 2. We'll, we'll see. There'll be, there's always lots to do though. So there's lots, lots of excitement there and lots of, lots of fun. <laughs> uh, then Tuesday, then well, we'll see if the Swiss is a video on Tuesday. No promises for that one. Wednesday, we will. I will be streaming XCOM once again. So uh, carrying on fighting the alien menace, and it, it, it's it's going. I'd say it's going quite well. Um, we do seem to be losing rather a lot of soldiers, but you know that's XCOM. Uh, we're, we've also discovered some new types of aliens, which is a little bit scary, and they're they're kind of tough. Then Thursday will be GTA videos as ever, and Friday and Saturday of next week, of course, there'll be more catch-up videos from the uh, from the Monday night stream. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Um, makes me means means the world to me. Makes me helps the channel grow. Uh, means I can um, get get more people watching my videos, which is always nice. And just generally get things bigger and better, and hope things and, and, and aim aim for them aim for the stars, or at least or at least some of the planets out here in the solar system like um, Agnea or Taishikuten. Please also check out the channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. If you use the code LawrencePlays on checkout, then you'll get 20% off your first month uh, of hosting of a, a Factorio or a Minecraft or a whatever else server. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Um, but that's all I have for you today. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.